the kind of guy to say, don't mind if I do when offered the last cookie? Not me. I would say that's not me. I would say, are you sure? My, my boilerplate reply to that would be like, are you sure? Then I would say, thank you. So that one, I would say, does not apply. I applaud the effort, but it does not apply. What about when they offer you a sample at Costco? I don't know what kind of decrepit ass Rust Belt cities you guys are living in. They never offer a free sample at Costco. They shove the tray out here and then within like three seconds, a group of people that queued up grabs all the little ramekins with the shit in it. Like there's no like, hey, would you like to try this? The shit is like, it's like when you're eating uh, In-N-Out Burger in Golden Gate Park and you scatter some french fries on the ground. Like, there's seagulls waiting around for that shit. <clears throat> okay. Hang on, hang on. We might be on this boss. Ooh! For... hours. So just take it easy. It's gonna take a certain length of time. It's gonna take as long as it takes. We're gonna relax. We're gonna learn some patterns. We're gonna have a good, 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 good time. This is really what it's all about here. Go ahead. Yes, more of that, please. Are you, are you telling me this guy has guard regain retain as well? Is that what that translucent health bar is? Nice try. Ooh! They all got it? I guess I've just never been hit before, so it's never been relevant. Makes me more intelligent. Call me Mr. Rock Festival. Because I got hella bands. Right? Yep. I should have known that part was coming. That's okay. Okay. Oh! Just a little bit. That's a two-piece. Nice miss. I'm ready for this. I'm ready. Nice. P's not messing around. Good placement, P. Comes down faster than you'd expect. Hits him with the two-piece. Stay on him. We're going to learn something about phase two. Don't throw up on me. I didn't know he had it in him, honestly. Faster than you'd expect, and then the extra jab. I'm gonna be a little under Estes. That's life. We accept that. That's our role. We own that. You gotta have a brass one for that. <laughs> All right, all right. Now, I don't really know what you do, so I'm a little scared. Let's take two. Holy. He didn't have to pose like that after he landed the shot. Oh. I thought I had my guard up. Turns out I was just getting my freak on. Oh, these, these, I'm out of the Estes, man. I'm dead. Okay, well, phase two, we got some work to do. Phase one, not so bad. <clears throat> That's tough. They didn't give me a fork, but thankfully I had one in my car. So goaded. I don't know what that's in reference to. But I will say, on our way home from uh, our very important errand this morning, we stopped by McDonald's. This McDonald's did not have a drive through so we had to go inside. Um, and as oftentimes happens at McDonald's's, eight normal people 
not to be derogatory, and then one absolutely insane person uh, walking up to the front. You know what? I think this one might be rinsed. <laughs> He said, I'm still waiting for my fucking sausage and eggs. And then the um, lady behind the counter said, what? And he said, I said, I'm still waiting for my fucking sausage and eggs. And then they started talking to him and they were like, what, what seems to be the problem, sir? And he said, I ordered a fucking sausage and egg and I've been waiting for it for 15 minutes. And they were like, oh, sir, we have the order. We just never got payment for it, so we didn't start making it. And he said, I don't know what kind of bullshit you pull here, but this is the second time I paid for my order and never gotten my food. So he started going like, you know, he was grumbling a lot and he was not afraid to use profanity. Let's just put it that way. Oh! But anyway, he, he got out uh, some money and he paid for the meal. Which I have to assume, with no disrespect to him, I have to assume that was the first time. Because they kept saying, like, well, if you paid for it, where's your receipt? And he was like, you didn't give me a receipt. And I'm like, really? You, you paid for it, they don't remember you paying for it, and you don't have your receipt? Like, you must think you were, they were born yesterday, brother. You gotta get a better grip than this. Um, so he paid for it, and he said, because of all this runaround, I want another pancake with it. Make it happen! Make it happen! And then the lady was like, if you want an extra pancake, I'm gonna charge you for it. And he said, he just kept getting like increasingly irate. And uh, then the other worker was like, order 525. And I was like, yo, that's me. See ya! Bye, everybody! Have a good time! And then uh, I was in my car waiting for Kate to come back from the grocery store and I saw a security kick him out. And I was like, that was a very predictable uh, end result of that interaction, I think. But I was losing it when he was like, make it happen. Make it happen. I'm decayed, bro. I'm decayed again. I don't even, okay, that's what that attack is. I should have known that. Is the McDonald's in a mall? No, it's just in Vancouver, so it's got security. He also, he, uh, without being too disrespectful to the guy, I was like, he's crazy. Cause they were like, do you want, is there anything else? And he said, yeah, five extra butters. And I was like, holy jeez, man. Save some for the creamery. Five extra, <clears throat> five extra butters? Three dollars. Give your arteries a break, man. Also, what happened to the McDonald's Monopoly? I know there was like 20 years of it being a scam. I'm not talking about that specifically. 10 piece chicken McNugget comes with two Monopoly pieces. Seems about right. Um, medium fries doesn't come with any Monopoly? You gotta get a large to get Monopoly pieces? That's crazy, man. I, hang on, though. I, I realized I didn't open the, the Canadian McDonald's Monopoly on my drink. Oh, man. What do we got here? Ooh, I don't want to brag. We got a Robson Street. You get all three of the green properties. $2,000 Hudson's Bay Company gift card. Signal Hill. You get all the oranges. $25,000 cash with an asterisk after it. Are those the... the those are probably not the... Um, the Chase Rares. I'm not trying to be a hater, by the way. Anyone else in this situation? Why do they make you choose what drink you want on the kiosk when, whenever you get your food? They just hand you an empty cup and say, the fountain's over there. Like, they got shit in the kiosk that is not in the fountain. Every time my dad goes to a McDonald's here, they're like, um... 
They ask him what he wants to drink on the kiosk, and he's like, Orange Fruitopia. Then he goes to the, the fountain. There's no Orange Fruitopia, because it's not 1997 anymore. But like, why'd you, why'd you have to get the poor guy's hopes up? getting rid of the self-serve fountains here in the U.S. Honestly, it might be an... Um, I'm not... I don't care, honestly, about the social ramifications of that. I will be happier with them handing me a full cup of beverage instead of me having to go to the thing and fill it up myself. I personally, for my own selfish reasons, I support this decision. I would like to... I would like to give McDonald's their flowers for that one. Is it a fountain fountain? Is this like a non-European terminology? It's not like a like a, a fountain, like a like a wishing well or something like that. It's it's what you call the array of drink dispensers after you get the empty cup. Oh who do you think you are? A Pachycephalosaurus? Trying to headbutt me? What happens in Europe? In Europe, do they give you the fountain? Do they, do they give you the cup, or do they just give you the straight up uh, the drink that you ordered? Usually, just the drink. The hell, man! They, they don't trust us. With, well, I, I guess they do trust us. They should be trusting you. Fountain drinks are NA pilled. I don't really care for the drink fountain. It's I think it's nice in a buffet type situation. But like 99% of the time I'm at a fast food restaurant, I am not eating in. So it's not like I'm going to get a, a refill or something like that. I would rather just have the cup, honestly. The ice, though? You can get ice in the fountain. You can get ice from the, from the McDonald's. They'll do it for you. Fountain's the only reason to eat in. Hey, hey, what if you don't have access to, like, the worst television channels on your home TV? What if you don't have access to Bloomberg News? Catch my ass getting an all-day sausage McMuffin at, like, 2 p.m. in college. The McDonald's has Bloomberg News on. Like, like who are you trying to kid here? Yeah, like, right before I got my Sausage McMuffin, I was just saying, I wonder how the NASDAQ's doing today. Ooh. My wife's sick and she doesn't want to drink the green juice that I know she needs. Any advice? Oh, you got me, kid. All I'm going to say is that everybody, everybody gangsta until you have to drink the green juice. When you're buying the green juice, everybody's like, oh, $20 for a liter of juice? Yeah, that seems fair. It's, gonna, it's a miracle drug. Then they take like one little sip of it and they're like, whoa. But you don't get better just by, just by buying it. I don't even know if you get better by drinking it. You got to go for it. I think I OD'd on elderberry. Jay, my mom goes insane for the elderberry. Anytime I'm like, I think I'm getting a little sick, she's like, here's some elderberry syrup. And a, and a flat ginger ale. Hey, what the hell? Dude, this, when did he get so hard? <laughs> He's tough. 
<clears throat> First phase was not so bad before, but that was when he was doing the, the easy moves. Like, now he's messing around. Elder trees have a ton of cyanogen. It's very toxic. Thanks, D.L. Guiga. Appreciate that. What do you want me to do about it, motherfucker? I'm just a guy. I'm not the king of the trees. <laughs> My ass. Don't lick a tree when you see it. I wasn't planning on it, buddy. Bandel today? Ah! Oh, Bandel.app. Okay, hang on. Released in 1978, 22 million views. Keyboard ass beat. Okay, I don't know it. Give me bass. Ooh. I love it. I like it. Okay, how about the electric guitar? Ooh. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna know this. Little old lady got mutilated late last night. That's Werewolves of London by Warren Zevin. Yes, it is. We got it in three. We gotta hear um, voice cover. Ah, uh, woo! I know what he's talking about. I know everything about that. <clears throat> Please do not reference Sweet Home Alabama. I already had to do it. Um, I had to do it in my 30 minute Matt Wilpers classic rock ride today. Big wheel keeps on turning. Who, who, who? Hey, oh, he got me, kid. You think Dum Dum loves this song or hates it? I'm I'm done talking about and to that guy. I said, Apollo, this sounds crazy. You should play Lies of P. He said, I'm never playing Lies of P. I'm not going to play a Dark Souls game that doesn't have Miyazaki's involvement. I said, it's better than Dark Souls 2. He said, guess what, motherfucker? Dark Souls 2 didn't have Miyazaki's involvement. I said, okay, be that as it may, Lies of P has Miyazaki's DNA all over it. And then he said, listen, I can't play a single player game. My viewers will leave. And I said, okay, well, if you're looking for something to play, Backpack Battles has a, a deviant art core art style, but it uh, is actually pretty pog. He said, unfortunately, that counts as a single player game. Which is not a single player game for the record. And then I said, well, what are you gonna do, motherfucker? All the Among Us viewers are now 34 year old insurance agents. And he said, I don't know. And I said, well, I, you better not catch your ass playing Sid Meier's Civilization 4 anymore after all the objections to the shit that you gave me. And he goes, I definitely am going to play more Sid Meier's Civilization 4. And I'm like, okay, well, then, then you are truly lost. I don't know what you want me to say. Like, I, I came through with some good recommendations, I thought. I said, I better, I, I, I mean, I was a little insulting in my own responses to him. I'm not going to deny that. It's the way of the world. But I did say, I better not catch you doing seven hour just chatting stream. Ask me anything number nine, 91, open parentheses, my DoorDash just arrived edition. And he said, listen, bud. I'm messing with you. He said, listen, but I don't, I don't remember what he said after that. I can't believe I missed you on that one. 
Oh, okay, you got me. <laughs> I'm not making it up, I swear to you. You're Apollo's DL, Apollo's DL Guiga? Well, I was just trying to give him like some helpful games because I saw that he's been playing just chatting for 20 years. I thought maybe he could use some advice. It turns out the man's stuck in his ways. But did I or did I not say he was like, I can't do Jackbox that week. That's when Mario comes out. I said, you're going to beat that shit in two days anyway. Why are, you, why are you stunting on me? Dude's not playing Mario today. The game's what, like 48 hours old? It's already old news, bro. Maybe I am being a hater. Can you just chill out with the, the damn decay? <clears throat> oh, there's new manga map today. I can't hate on that. Sometimes you got to be a hater to be a good friend. That's my... I'm not afraid to be that guy. Whenever, like, a stranger tells me that they're like, oh, I kind of lapsed on exercise, I'm like, don't worry about it, brother. You'll get back to it. Meanwhile, like, every once a week, I at Apollo and Corey, and I'm like, you guys got to get your asses back on the fucking bike. The egg carton is going hard. You guys are going to be left in the damn dust. By the time you get back on the bike, you're going to be coming... 34th place out of 34 riders and then you're gonna be like I don't want to do it anymore because there's no positive reinforcement That's not gonna get the motivated idiot. Bro. I'm not their mom. They could do whatever they want. They know what's good for them It's not my job to give them the, the silver bullets so that they uh, hop on I'm just trying to you know push them in the direction that would be helpful for them I just have no idea how you're hitting 400 kilojoules a ride. I'm, I got a little pissed off in, with the egg carton today, okay? First ride, Tabata. We went hard, okay? It's, it's Ali Love Tabata. Of course you go hard. Second ride, 30-minute Alex Toussaint West Coast Hip Hop ride. I went, I went the same degree of hardness. Everybody else started to flag a little bit because I understand they got better engines, these young bucks, but their battery doesn't have quite the same amount of capacity. Then in the third ride, I, I got people, you got to remember, they're like two kilojoules below me in the output, okay? They're like less than half of 1% away. I start getting added in the Discord. I'm looking at it from like 30 feet away. The messages are like, please slow down. Please slow down. If you fucking slow down, I'll slow down. The re you don't think my legs are hurting? You don't think my lungs are blowing up? The reason I'm up there at the top of the leaderboard is because you're pushing my... Every time I get 15 kilojoules ahead of you, you crank up your resistance and then take it down to 5 kilojoules. So I got to crank up my resistance again. So if you fucking slow down, I'll slow down and it'll be good for both of us. But don't tell me to slow down before you slow down, okay? Because that's just not going to happen unless my legs, like, break, which it, it does occasionally happen during the ride, but... Just out of a lack of, uh, like, willpower? No, it's not gonna happen. You won't see that happening. I just couldn't believe that the motherfuckers who were, like, right on my ass were like, please slow down, my legs hurt. And I'm like, why the hell do you think you're... Why do you think I'm pedaling so hard? It's because your ass is, like, right on me. There we go. I hit 190 BPMs on my Apple Watch. Is that normal? Or were you on the rides? If you're exercising, I don't think that's abnormal for like some serious exercise. They always say like your max heart rate should be like like 210 minus your age or something. If you're just sitting down, then you got a problem. <laughs> 220 minus age. There you go. I own you. It's insane how much I own you.
You think the stock market's finally collapsing? Yeah, this is definitely the big one. I mean, the S&P 500 is only up 11% year over date or year to date. This is definitely you should you should definitely sell everything. Oh, you got me. <clears throat> right, back me up, Dio Guiga. I don't know. You're in Chicago. You might be trading like you know flower contracts or something. I don't know. I'm not a trader. Are you insane? Bro, you live in Chicago. Isn't your ass dealing in with like pork futures or something? Nope. I know I'm close to the reality because the we got had no mean response to that. He just he hit me with a nope. It, it was like a, a stealth message that was like, don't dig any deeper, you're almost there. Your perception of Chicago is from 1925? Bro, he works in finance. Otherwise, my perception would be from like, oh, D.L. Guiga, you're from Chicago. Don't you work at a ghost kitchen that sells like the bear themed Italian beefs? If I didn't know that the dude worked in finance, I wouldn't be talking about pork barrel futures. You think I'm crazy? I'm not, I'm not doxing your ass. That was open information that you, you placed into this chat. Okay, this is the one. Man. Half the restaurants here serve Italian beef. It's a bad business. Me, when I see uh, a new coffee shop open up. Bro, try selling something new that people aren't interested in at all. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Isn't the commodities market still located in Chicago? Bro, that's what I'm saying, but everybody wants to act like, because they've seen uh, The Good Wife, everyone must be working at the, uh, oh, oh, what is, what's what's the name of the law firm in The Good Wife, man? Come on, back me up here. The law firm in The Good Wife, help me. I need your help on this one. Stern Lockhart Gardner. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, it was Stern Lockhart for a while, but I don't want to... Let's not spoil one of the greatest Chicago shows ever made. If you're the green monster, just call me Johnny Damon. The way I'm making you irrelevant. Got me with that one. Minus two? What? Johnny Damon was a great Red Sox player. You might be too young to remember. All you remember is Kevin Killis. I miss the bosses that it's just like phase two does exactly the same attacks as phase one, but do more damage. I'm not cut out for this lifestyle. Hey, dude, he's got back legs! Oh, I gotta tell you a story about when I picked up my daughter from daycare yesterday. Dude. Oh, I'm dead! I'm alive. It was so good. Just give me a second to probably die realistically, but... Yep. So I, I was picking up my daughter from daycare and I was the second last parent to arrive. 
So when I got to the door, it's like a glass door. I could see my kid and one of her friends there, who was like a four-year-old boy. And they were on the couch, and I could see that the daycare worker was like in the kitchen washing some dishes. So I knocked on the door, and my daughter went like, <gasps> Daddy! And then the other, the four-year-old boy looked at me, and he was like perched on the edge of the couch, right? Like the way kids do, like on the armrest. He looked at me, and then he like looked back at my daughter, and just doing that was enough to like set him off balance. He fell off the, the armrest of the couch, and he fell like face into the floor, like his face, neck, and chest landed on the floor, but then moment, momentum carried his legs like backwards over his head. Like the way that if you saw an adult fall like that, uh, you would be like, they're dead. But he, he, yes, he got turned into a scorpion. And I was like, oh my God. But then like the, the way kids are built, he just like snapped up in like less than an eighth of a second. He was just like, Hsun! And then he looked, and I could tell that he was going to cry. He was like, ah! And then the daycare worker came out, and like my daughter hugged the boy who fell and stuff like that. And then the daycare worker opened the door, and she said, oh, your daughter's name accidentally hit this kid in the face when she was excited that you were there. So like I had them hug it out, but I told her she needs to pay more attention. And I was like, what the fuck? I was watching the whole thing when you were doing the dishes, lady. This kid just fell unprompted off of the damn couch. But at, outwardly, I was like, uh, you know, oh, okay. But as soon as the door closed, I was like, you know you didn't hit him in the face, right? My daughter was like, yeah, I know. And I was like, okay, so don't let her tell you that you hit him in the face. I saw the whole thing. He literally just fell. But it was very funny. <laughs> the fall was so good. I was like, is he okay? And my daughter was like, yeah, he's fine. She said, like, that would really hurt daddy if I fell like that. And she was like, yeah, it would. Okay, sorry, I didn't realize. My three-year-old is like aware of how fragile her adult father's body is. It is crazy, though. Like, any adults... Well, I mean, like... We, so Kate and I were chasing the high of that show, um, The Devil's Plan, the Korean, like, survival game show. So we started watching this one called Siren, which is, like, a, an insane sort of, like, survivor-type show featuring women who work physical, dangerous jobs in Korea. And then, like, one of them is a firefighter. She... She was climbing a tree, and she fell down, like, two feet. And fucked up her back, probably, for, like, the rest of her life. I'm sure the executive producers were like, we are cooks. <laughs> but that fall was, like, one one hundredth as bad as the fall that I saw at daycare. Like, she was climbing a tree, the branch snapped, and she fell down, like, straight on her back. Like, I, it would hurt, don't get me wrong. But the way that this kid fell, like, if that happened in the show, they would have forced them out. They would have been like, you need to go see, like, a neurologist or get, like, a, get, like, a CAT scan immediately or something like that. It is the, it's the benefits of weighing 40 pounds. And, like, your bones not being, like, fully... I don't really know the mechanics of it. Like, your bones are not rigid as a kid so it's harder to it's harder for them to snap <laughs> also you're much closer to the ground I, I think about I'm gonna die I think about that every time I go skiing or snowboarding they're like when an adult falls down they're like well I'm done for the day and when a kid falls down they just like literally pop back up in half a second I'm like yeah because you only fell like 18 inches Kids are bouncy, it's true.
Caesars Entertainment down 7% today. That's probably because they got to pay for all the damage that the streamers did at TwitchCon, right? It's called Cap X. DL Guiga, back me up here. Hey, the, the streamer convention's coming back next year. We need to install another air fryer and, and bulk order some chicken tenders. Just say that's cap. No, you don't. I know you finance types allegedly. I listen to podcasts. I'm sure you don't just say that's cap. You're like, well, the gap M and the fucking EBITDA this year was, blah, blah. but then again, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So we gotta consider like the veracity of their accounting data to begin. It's like, shut the fuck up, okay? If you're not gonna confirm what I said, then you just mind your own business, okay? It's a 30,000 foot view, you're directionally correct. <laughs> oh! I appreciate that. Whoops, whoops. Has DL Guiga ever backed you up? We disagree, but on, on some things, but DL Guiga backs me up on the Peloton sometimes. Like when it's just me and, and Midwestern emo riding, it's like, fuck you, fuck you. But it, when it's like me, Midwestern emo, and Kinana, me and Midwestern emo are like, come on, man. You see that the average cadence of the ride was supposed to be 81, but then Kinana's average cadence was like 63. Like, what, what, are, you, what are you trying to pull here? John Hamm should play Shrek in the live-action Shrek movie. Thoughts? I'm alive. Plus two. Appreciate that. Why? I don't know. Because he's a fucking good actor and he's ugly. <laughs> it's, one of the, it's one of the ugliest men I've ever seen. It's probably, if you're not going to go with John Hamm, you got to go with some other ogre. Like maybe like a Chris Hemsworth type. George Clooney, Hugh Jackman, you know, just like a, one of those character actors who just like, you know, they, they don't really have one, a classic leading man sort of aura to them, but they've got uh, a lot of charisma. Yeah, no, 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 they're, they're ugly. I mean, we're not, if you want to, you want to, you don't want a stud to play Shrek. You don't want Michael Stuhlbarg to be Shrek, okay? That's not a role that Jesse Plemons was born to take. Flip, bitch. Perfect phase one incoming. Who's the hottest man alive? I have, I don't know. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't I don't say this as like a point of pride. If anything, it's I'm I'm embarrassed by this. I think I'm just like really, really straight. I can't even like astral walk across the plane and then be like this must this is the guy that i would find hot i think because whenever i say something to people whenever whenever people are like who's a handsome celebrity i'm always like stanley tucci and they're like come on they're like he's handsome yeah but like hot and i'm like well i don't know what you want me to say man then people are like, you just pick bald uh, people. That's not fair. But if you pick, like, if, you, if I asked you for the five hottest dudes in Hollywood and you picked five motherfuckers with hair, I wouldn't be like, oh, that's baldest. I would be like, you like hair, whatever. Like, everybody makes mistakes.
John Hamm would be up there. John Hamm is one of those dudes where I'm like, it's not fair that he's also funny. He should have no sense of humor. Like, how did you... I understand. Whenever I see, like, kind of a half-busted guy who's really funny, I'm like, I totally know how, <laughs> how you generated your sense of humor. Because you were like, you know, I need to provide some value to the social stew here. And unlike beautiful people, it didn't come easy to me. Like, I didn't just walk into the room and people were like, here's free shit. Like, I had to impress them in a more creative way. <laughs> so whenever, uh, whenever a really handsome person also has a better sense of humor than me, I'm like, what the fuck, man? How did that, were you like fucking, did you get like face surgery at like age 22 or something like that? How did that happen? Did you have like some kind of condition you just got over? Is there hope for the rest of us? And now the type of guy to ask is everyone buckled up before he takes the car out of park. Okay, like that one, you got me. But also, what's wrong with that? That just that's that's just being safe. The only reason I wouldn't ask is if I was driving a car that had like automatic safety features built in that would like let me know that you're not buckled up. I I really had you too. Man's got a three-year-old, of course he does. Well, like, I buckle my three-year-old in, so I'm really, I'm the kind of guy who gets into the car, starts driving, and is like, oh, shit, I know she's in the car seat, but did I do it up? <laughs> I know I put her in, and I definitely put, like, the chest clasp on, but did I put the buckles into the buckle part? Because at the same time you're doing it, you're like having some kind of insane conversation, like, I guess I would be a butterfly if I had to choose any animal to be. So you get a little distracted sometimes. One, two, three, and we don't even worry about number four. I live rent free in your head. Two. Don't even worry about three or four. How long until she can ride shoddy? I gotta be honest, I don't know all the car seat, like, timing. Because when I was a kid, I feel like age three or four, you were, like, out of the car seat and on, like, a booster seat. Now it's, like, I think you gotta be, like, 17 or something like that before you get out of the car seat. And it's probably for the best, like, I'm not gonna say, like, oh, that's bullshit. That's bullshit, though. But it's kind of like, it's, it's a little messed up, because you think about all the times, like, you and your four ten-year-old friends were sitting in, like, your, your friend's dad's pickup truck. And it's like, you didn't even have seatbelts for, like, the fifth kid. You had to be like, which one of your friends are you gonna miss the least if we get in an accident? Nowadays, it's like the, the cops won't let you even pull out of the parking lot unless you got a car seat for everybody 12 years or under? One kid went in the trunk. I, I've, I've ridden in the trunk a couple times. It's a, it's a fast pass to Vomit City, but... I've ridden in the back of a, a pickup truck before. Praying there's no speed bumps on this road. Was it by choice? Well, it was by necessity. I mean, when you've got one friend with a car and eight people who want to go see Quantum of Solace, like, you make do.
chill. Fucking chill. Oh, they came out early. There we go. There we go. Unlike Dune 2. Very true. That's not coming out early. That's, we gotta dodge that? That's... You gotta dodge that shit! <clears throat> yeah, I'm into doing two. Doing two chicks at the same time. Uh, this is one I gotta send the, the librarian back. Not, not you, librarian, but the one in my brain. I was like, I remember that actor's name. And then I, I literally, in my head, I repeated the sentence. Like, lore keeper, go find me the name of the actor who plays that guy in Office Space. And by the time I finished saying this sentence, it came back. It's Diedrich Bader. You think anyone wants a roundhouse kick to the face when I'm wearing these bad boys? Forget about it. Lord Keeper, pee his pants. Don't pee my pants. I went pee before the stream today. I'm okay. I'm 34. I went pee before the stream. I own you. You're trash. You're garbage. You're coats. He's nothing. Don't hijack my Lord Keeper. That's what I'm scared about. That's why, like, when people are so excited about, like, oh, I can uplo upload my brain to the cloud. It would be cool in some ways to have some degree of consciousness, like, live on forever. But I'm sure also the fucked up part is that, like, if they invent that, and, like, it's taken a long time just to get the AI to actually, you know can write an essay for you at an 8th grade level, so like, let's maybe focus on that before we get, uh... Let's chill. Before we worry about putting our brains in the Neuralink or, or whatever, but... You know that, like, the, the first generation that lives forever is gonna be like, actually, living forever sucks. Always think about that, like... When my mom is like, why does everyone hate baby boomers? And I'm like, well, in hindsight, they had so many, like, headwinds in their lives that the current generation doesn't have. So there's, like, they, they feel like the ladder has been pulled up after them. That's one of the many reasons. And then my mom said, yeah, but, like, when we were growing up, like... Or, sorry, tailwinds. Sorry, tailwinds. You're right. See, D.L. Guiga, you could have corrected me on that one. For Mr. Finance. But, um... She was like, yeah, but every day that I was growing up, we thought, like, the USSR was going to drop Sar Bomba on our head. And I was like, well, they didn't, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Boo freaking who? Oh, you all thought you were going to be annihilated in nuclear war. Well, you weren't, so shut up. I'm ready. Instead, they drop Love Bomba. So true, Richie Valens. Ooh, one of these days. One of these days, I'm not gonna die instantly. One of these days. It seems like one of those songs you could probably do every music part with your mouth. You know what I mean? I feel like you could probably do the entire rhythm section of the impression that I get with just your mouth at the same time. Drums, bass, guitar, trombone at the same time. Well, I, it's going to piss me off if there's like a heaven or whatever and then like all these gen alpha whatever motherfuckers are like hey remember when people used to die oh god i wish that were me shut the fuck up and like 
Live forever, Lazarus. Like, can't you just enjoy something? What the hell was that? I'm not playing around anymore. Somebody get me, you know how like you can get those tweets or the, those images from Genius where it's like the artist's face and then the lyric is on like a little card? Can I get one of those um, from Sufi and Stevens that says, I'm not fucking around? My rhythm's all fucked up, bro. You know, like the one from the Beach Boys, that's not me, that just says, that's not me. Whatever. The K's never really bothered me anyway. Me when I'm King K rule. One, two, three, we don't worry about it. My shit's broken. I'm ready. Oh, I'm not ready. <laughs> oh no, my shit! It's broken! Classic. Classic little bit. Our shit, sorry. Our shit. Let's be real though, why did they stack cement bricks on the table? Kids are just really dumb, man. I mean, like, adults are really dumb too, to be honest. But like, 10 year old kids, they probably had some cement bricks and then they said like, let's see how many like our table can hold. They didn't think about the, the end game, which is like, what happens when it doesn't hold? I need some context on this. Maybe it's before your time, the ugly guys. So it's a classic YouTube video of a couple of kids. They're probably like 11 years old. They're stacking a bunch of cement bricks on a table. And then it breaks, because of course it does. And then the one kid says, Oh no, our table! It's broken! <laughs> oh, man. It was indeed a glass, a glass table. As I recall, it was a horror film. <laughs> insanely, insanely loud shattering noise. <laughs> oh, yeah. One second, man. One second. One second. <laughs> it's only 24 oh, seconds. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Our table! It's broken! <laughs> Kids are so funny, dude. <laughs> I forgot it's like in the. It has like phases. Like, first the. They were stacking them on eggs, like all the bricks crush the eggs, and then the bricks go tumbling down, and then the table collapses under the weight of the bricks. <laughs> it shatters. Oh, just kill me. That wasn't even close. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. It is so loud. <laughs> they were those motherfuckers were right for the wrong reasons, man. Loud does equal funny. Whoo, that's a good one. Which one's funnier, that video or the cop flying down the slide? It's the table video. The cop one is still really good. The table one is in like it's all it's in a league all of its own, man. Oh no, our table! It's broken. Stop.
Stop decaying me. I don't know how to fucking deal with that because I'm running out of goo ampules. Hey, by the way, how's Mouth doing in Spelunky 2? Has he found the new shop tea yet? You ever see the I can break this these cuffs video? That's another all-time classic. I can break these cuffs. You can't break those cuffs. We appreciate your cooperation. Oh, man. You ever see the evolution of dance? No joke, we had a friend in university. It was like clockwork. Anytime he got like two moose head loggers in him, he's like, you guys gotta see this video. Dude straight up goes to YouTube sorts by most viewed all time. Here we go, evolution of dance, check it out. Motherfucker's doing the damn robot now. Who would have thought? I'm hooked on that one, that's for sure. Oh, he's got two in him. You ever see the LARPers who found a dead body? Yeah, but that guy's a comedian. Graham, whatever his name is. He's the dude doing the divorced dad uh, pack openings. It's still funny, but I'm here to tell you it's, it's a fabrication. It's not a... I don't want to say it's fake. Because that's like saying like Saturday Night Live is fake. But it's, it's, a, it's a confabulation. It's a bit. <clears throat> you ever watch three hour long video essays to fall asleep? Nope. Literally never. I'm being, I swear to you, on my life, I'm not putting on airs. You can ask Kate. I never go to YouTube. I occasionally see YouTube uh, because my wife is watching it. I do not go to YouTube of my own volition, ever, except to upload my own videos. I got nothing against it. It's a, uh, it's an amazing website. It, it's it, it's amazing and terrible. But I'm like a, I'm a very low key sort of guy. I'm, you know what I, I know how this sounds. In many ways, I kind of think. In, in this way specifically, I think I might be like the anti-zoomer. I, uh... Okay, you got me the other day. I did just watch the glass table video on, uh, on YouTube. You got me there? I, I'm like a low stimulation guy. Like, I have no problem eating dinner and just staring at the food while I eat it. Insane. <laughs> what have I done? I don't want to be here. Never mind, it worked. Are you depressed? No, I'm just... I know how this sounds. In the whole scheme of things, I think I'm actually just kind of normal. I think I might be the sanest out of, out of all y'all. Now, lately, we've been watching that Korean show that I told you about, Siren. Hang on, I need some, I need some positive momentum here. But, like, for the most part... Ooh, I'm just kind of chilling. No, 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 don't go that far away. I, that's what I was worried about. What videos do you get recommended on YouTube? I don't know. Hey, hang on, I, oh, I, I can't pause this. I could alt tab for a second. Plox Ness Music Beach. Stephen King's honest opinion about The Shining. Review bra, but it's a Midwest emo intro. What the hell? Midwest, mid Midwestern emo? They're spying on my damn microphone? Vines that cure my anxiety. Abstract liquid background video, no sound, 4K Ultra HD. Like, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel, man. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> I 
The algorithm doesn't know that much about me, which is funny because it should, because I upload. Okay, you, you stutter stepped me. Okay, that, that shit is stupid. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta block it, man. I gotta, I gotta block.